The standard situation is when the consumer has downward sloping convex indifference curves. And we studied that earlier. The budget constraint looks like this. It's a straight line, x and y. The indifference curves have the nice usual shape. And then you go to a point like this. But there might be cases where the indifference curve doesn't look like that. And we just got finished looking at the case where the indifference curves look like that, and we got some unusual behavior. In particular, we got two places where the budget constraint was tangent to an indifference curve, and one of those places was not where the consumer wanted to go. Now, what I've drawn in, in this, uh, this new graph, this large graph, is another example. The slanted black line is the budget constraint, like usual. This is the budget constraint. And the indifference curves now I've drawn in a different color, in, in a purple, so you can see them. And the weird thing about them is they're straight lines. They're not convex. They're downward sloping, just like usual, but they're, they're straight lines. So let's try to see here where the consumer wants to go. Now, of course, he always wants to maximize his utility subject to being in the affordable set. So everything outside of the affordable set is totally irrelevant. So, you know, this part over here, you can just totally ignore. I'll say ignore because that's outside of his affordable set and, and it's irrelevant. Inside his affordable set, he's going to want to try to maximize his utility. Now, he could go to a point like A, but he'd be selling himself short because there are ways that he can get to a utility level U2 if he goes to point B over here. That's better than point A because it gives him a utility level U2 and A only gives him a utility level of U1. He could go to a point like C or D or E all those would give him a level, utility level of U3, which is better than U2. So it's not only better than A, it's also better than B. But I claim he can even get to a utility level of U4 by going to, let's say, F or G. Can he get to U6? No. Because any point on U6, here or here or here, those points are outside his affordable set. He can't reach U6. But I claim he can reach U5. Suppose this is point H. Well, it's, a, it's at a corner of his budget constraint. But at that corner, he can get to U5. And U5 beats U4, U3, U2, U1, and U0. It's higher than any of those other levels. So he's going to want to go to point H. He's not going to go, want to go to a point like C or G. He's going to want to go to H. That's what maximizes his utility within his affordable set. Now, H is a kind of strange optimal point. At least it's different than the ones we saw before, because the ones we saw were characterized by a tangency condition. Uh, you recall that there's a tangency condition for the standard case, and there was also a tangency condition for the, uh, the, the weird case that we talked about last time. The budget constraint is not tangent to the uh, indifference curve here. The indifference curve is U5. It has this slope. And the budget constraint has, I mean, you know, the, the slope is the, the slope is, uh, the slope of the tangent line is the slope of the budget constraint. And so, and the tangent line to the budget constraint is here. So clearly the budget constraint and the indifference curve don't have the same slope. So there's no tangency. And remember, the tangency, the, the tangency like this, meant that the price ratio was equal to the margin rate of substitution. But that's not true here. In other words, um, Px over, over uh, uh, Py was equal to the margin rate of substitution. But that's not true here at point H. So the idea that the budget constraint has to be the slope of the budget constraint has to equal the slope of the indifference curve. Or in other words, that the price ratio has, by price ratio I mean Px over Py, that the price ratio has to equal the margin rate of substitution at the optimal point. That's not true at point H. Um, 
this is an example where you have an optimal point, but the price ratio doesn't equal the marginal rate of substitution. In other words, um, Px over Py doesn't equal the marginal rate of substitution. So that shows that this uh, f the formula that we had is actually, and not only is it is it not a sufficient condition, it's not even a necessary condition. Having said that, we will usually study these kinds of cases. And in these kind of standard cases, you know, the, the, the cases that I started out with, the consumer does go where there's the tangency, and the price ratio does equal the margin rate of substitution at the optimal point.